you could see my setup right now. It's just an iPhone propped on a box. It's very um, sophisticated. Today is Sunday. I'll be posting the newsletter on Friday. One thing that's been on my mind recently is self-care. I spent some time on Friday and Saturday. My husband's in Mexico surfing. <laughs> And I'm sitting here in snowy Colorado, which I'm really not complaining. Um, so Friday and Saturday, I spent some time off. I spent some time reading and drinking tea and cacao. And I was telling a friend about it, about what I've been up to. And I, the term that came to mind was guilty pleasures. I was involving myself in guilty pleasures. And... I struggle a lot with guilty feelings, especially related to taking time off. When you're an entrepreneur, a creative, when you have your own projects going on, there are always things you could be doing to advance your project. And often it's the case that the project won't be moving forward unless you are doing things to move it forward. Nobody else is working on it but you. Um, so I struggle to take time off. Let me back, to, back up. I don't always struggle to take time off, but I struggle with guilty feelings when I do take time off. It has recently become very apparent to me that if, if I don't take time off, if I am even just have a day that will be a half day after maybe seven days of working full time and then it's, you know, oh, it's Saturday and I'll just work half of the day because, hello, it's a whole day that could go by without getting any work done. I don't rejuvenate. I, I start to be drained and a lot of my projects give me life, but there's a, there's a level of stress and energy drain that goes on when you're working on projects. There's just no way around it. We're not designed or built to be moving at the speed of light, working on things all the time. Our bodies are designed for rest and relaxation and we need to let our nervous systems come down and our cortisol levels calm so that we can recharge and be fully present again with our projects. And I noticed that my work suffers. There's a lot of research around people who work overtime don't act, they, their productiveness drops to about half of what it is when they're not working overtime. And I, th I already think our work days and our work weeks are um, misaligned with who we are biologically as beings, as people as humans. Um, so I already have a little bit of beef with a normal workday schedule and then I find myself taking time off and feeling guilty about it. If you struggle with this too, I want you to know that you're not alone and I am embarking on a journey of rewriting that story because it, it's toxic. It doesn't actually allow me to rest if I'm feeling guilty about resting all the time. Instead, my mind keeps flickering back and forth between my to-do list and all the things that I should be doing instead of reading my lovely book that would otherwise have me captivated, but instead is bringing me anxiety. And that, so I feel like when you rest and you don't let it in, you're not actually resting. And you're not, and, and if anything, it's almost a greater loss because you're not spending time fully working on things and you're also not taking time to fully rest. And so you're kind of living in this in-between state where your energy is still draining and you're feeling stressed about it. Um, so the one thing that I would like to leave you with this week is don't forget to prioritize your rest. And granted, I don't have kids. I know that that's a whole different schedule and that's an important aspect too of then balancing your time with your family and then also your time to yourself. I've heard this from my mother friends before, my friends who are mothers, um, that you really do need to prioritize yourself because if you don't have anything to give, then uh, it's just gonna get worse. You need to really have your cup be full in order to give fully to other people, which also includes your projects, includes the things that you're working on. So even though your movie script 
is not getting done without you working on it, and your book manuscript's not getting done without you working on it, and your client stuff isn't getting done without you working on it, make sure to carve out time. And so my recommendation is put it in your schedule ahead of time. Block out time of this is me time so that when you come upon it in your calendar, in your day planner, you know that that is a chunked out block of time just as you have a chunked out block of time for writing an article for so-and-so and that it's your job to rest during that time. And you also know this is one of the traps that I fall into. You also know that there's an end point. Because I think sometimes when I get into a state of wanting to relax and I pick up my book, I feel, and this has happened, so there's validity behind it, but I feel like I'll never want to get back into work. I'll just want to keep resting for the rest of the time and I'll just read books for the rest of my life. Can't I get paid to do that? If you have a set time, a start time and an end time, then it relieves a lot of the anxiety of this will be the time when my resting is done. And it could be a whole day, right? It's whatever works for you. And then I'll be starting back on work at this time. And I think that that intention around realizing that your rest is, is one of your number one priorities, not just sleep. That's another important thing, but truly um, turning your phone on airplane mode, turning your computer off, that's a real treat and cozying up to do something that you like. It could be outdoors. You could enjoy going skiing or mountain biking or surfing, or you could enjoy reading a book or connecting with friends. Um, however you recharge, I'm an introvert, so I recharge by myself, but extrovert, extroverts will enjoy recharging with other people. You know yourself, you know what you like. Um, so that's what I've been working on this week. I think it's really important because I've been piling on more stuff that's such a negative connotation. I've been inviting more things into my life um, and I need to make space for them, both in my time, of course, but also energetically. And the only way to make space for things energetically is to make sure that we ran out of storage. <laughs> Why did I choose the smallest amount of storage for my iPhone? The only way to make... And it happened again. <sighs> Maybe I'm beating this point to a pulp and so now my phone keeps cutting me off like a director. Um, but the only way to make space thing for things energetically is to be fully revived, alive, pumped about all that you're doing. And for me, that requires self-care and rest. All right, my explorers, that's what I've been Laura the Explorer-ing this week. It's a verb now. I love hearing what you guys are up to, so feel free to send me an email. Tell me if what you do for self-care. Do you find you fall into the trap of feeling guilty? Have you found things that help you to not feel so guilty? I wonder if it's a trained thing. If we're, if you think about it, school is just so rigorous, and I and I think that that trained me to feel like if I'm not doing something all the time, if I don't have this crazy schedule of going from academics to acting to speech practice to dance to figure skating, um, then I'm not fully living my life. But I think that that, especially at this time in my life, my age, um, that that's really not the case. And I can't say that I was a very well-rested, energetic person during my high school days. So I think that that's another indication too. I wish you an awesome weekend. You'll receive this on Friday. Make sure to take some time for self-care. Nourish your body and your soul and your heart and your mind and your emotions. And I look forward to seeing you next time for Laura the Explorer. Mwah! I just wanted to show you the winter wonderland. Can't even see the mountains. It's so snowy. I was up on a ski hill earlier this morning and it was fresh pow, as I've learned they say in the ski snowboard world. I grew up on, on a very slight hill skiing, so I'm still learning the Colorado way. Oh, it's so pretty.